I don't gonna see anything. Are we on yet? Huh? Mom. Honey? Hey? Mom, where's everybody? I can't see anything. <laughs> this is pretty dark. You can't see anything with it. Huh? Let me see now. Okay, that's better. That's better. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good morning, everybody. It's Eclipse Day today. What date are we in? August 21, 2017. It's, it's a Monday. It's a Monday. We'd like to greet our uh, great-grandma, Anita. Happy birthday. Okay? The great-grandma of the kids. Uh, it's her birthday today. How old is Lola today? 88. Wow. 88. She must have seen uh, how many eclipses has she seen in her lifetime. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, today we have a very interesting, very interesting gospel. And we are going right ahead to read and comment on this gospel today. It comes from St. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. A young man approached Jesus. And said, Teacher, what must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, hey, what, what must I do to go to heaven, to gain heaven, to become a saint? That was his question, right? And he answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, meaning eternal life, to go to heaven, Keep the commandments, right? Very, very simple, uh, and and really, yeah, that's that's the main requirement. Keep the commandments. He asked him, which one? Which ones? Okay. Then our Lord goes on to enumerate. Well, Jesus replied, "You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself." The young man said to him, all these I have observed already. I'm living up to all of these requirements. I am doing all of these things. Is that all I need to do? Right? What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, right? Remember, our Lord said, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That's the the high demand of our Lord, the, the high expectation of our Lord from us. Be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So he's reminding this young man, if you want to be perfect, there's one more thing you need to do. Sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad. He turned his back on Jesus and didn't want to follow him. And the reason apparently is because he had many possessions. He was a rich man. He was a rich man. He had many possessions. Okay? Now, of course, the gospel reading for today stops there. But you see, it actually continues. The gospel um, account continues. And the apostles asked him later, Well, Lord, if that's the case, then uh, it's difficult for the rich to enter heaven. It's impossible for the rich man to, a rich man to enter heaven. And our Lord said the classic phrase, It is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. That, that, that's for our Lord to emphasize how difficult it is to go to heaven for a rich man, right? Because if you have plenty of possessions, you tend to get attached to them. You tend to get attached to them. And that is what's difficult. But, but our, our Lord says, but with God, nothing is impossible. See? So he continues that narration by saying, okay, don't worry. No, rich people can go to heaven because nothing is impossible with God. It is possible if you attach yourself to God rather than be attached to your riches. So our Lord is telling us here, there's nothing wrong about being rich. 
Because if you work hard, if you really earn your keep, and you, uh, you did very well professionally, and uh, otherwise, well, it's okay to have material things. It's okay to have riches. It's okay to have a, a home. It's okay to have cars. It's okay to have clothes. You need these things. Especially because for us, we, we work with people, we, we have businesses, we, 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 we deal with things of the world. We want to bring this whole world back to the feet of our Lord. Well, we work with material things. We will need material things. But what our Lord is cautioning about here is that we should not get attached to them. Our hearts should not get attached to these material things and cling to them as though they were the be-all and end-all of our existence. See? It cannot be like that. Material things are only a means to an end. What is our goal in life? To go to heaven. To go to heaven. But material things can drag us down to earth. Material things can be like weights see? That, are, that are heavy. And instead of making us like a balloon that will fly off to heaven, okay? It will be like dead weights that would uh, make us drown into the sea of material things of the earth. See? So that is what attachment to material things can do. So that our Lord is saying there's nothing wrong about being rich. But we have to understand that riches or material things are only here for us to use them as means to achieve an end. The end in, in view should always be heaven. It is always heaven, right? We should not allow, <laughs> today is Eclipse Day, we should not allow material things to eclipse the big sun, which is God, right? We should not allow uh, our material wealth to cover up our vision of God. Okay? The sun is like God, see, the, the, the source of all the radiance of our life and the source of eternal life, the source of all good. But if we allow material things to get the better of us if we get so attached to material things it will eclipse our view of the sun and we're going to have darkness of soul see? darkness is going to descend on our soul we're not going to see with clarity what god wants us to do in life because we are so are so blinded by the glitter and the sparkle of bling blings and material things of our life see from money to to uh, to uh, to the to the to the uh, 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 the lure of gadgets, cars, beautiful big homes, etc. We get blinded if we are so attached to these things. So we cannot allow material things to eclipse our life. We have to understand the role of material things in how it, they will lead us to God. Okay? So this rich young man might be called, our Lord might, maybe was calling him to a, to a stricter kind of detachment because our Lord told him, go sell what you have, right? Okay, well, maybe that's the vocation Jesus was calling him to. But for us ordinary people in the world okay, who live in the world and Jesus expects us to remain in the world and to sanctify this world, okay, to bring God to this world, right? We have to practice detachment from our earthly possessions. So it's okay for us to possess things. It's okay to even have riches. We just have to be detached from them. Now, let's try to talk about how we can do this. How can we detach ourselves from the material things of the world? Okay? From our possessions. I have a few tips. Number one, for you kids. Number one, Learn to share. Learn to share. Right? The things that you have from your toys to your uh, school pens or I don't know what. Your, your clothes even, right? We do plenty of hand-me-downs, right? <laughs> uh, we try to make good use of these things. Learn to share. Learn to share and learn to always give in. Give in to the other. Especially what's our rule in the house, right? As far as the little ones are concerned, the older ones should always give in, to the little ones. give in to the little ones. That's one way of of being detached to the things you like to do, okay? the things you like to have, right? We always try to share with the others. Okay, now, uh, what else? Number two, don't have anything superfluous. 
Don't have anything that is unnecessary. Okay? That is why, see, even the things that we used to have, we try to dispose of them. We donate plenty of our, uh, the things that we don't anymore need and we don't anymore use, right? Some of them we sell, right? We're planning to have a yard sale soon, right? Because we already want to dispose some of those things that we don't anymore need, okay? Well, there are people who are the opposite. There are people who are hoarders, they don't want to get rid of things they're not using anymore. They keep, 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 keep them. And so <laughs> it's funny how sometimes, right, you open up the garages of people. They're full of stuff, right? Because they don't know how to break away from their material possessions. Instead of the cars being in the garages, the garages are full of stuff. See? So disorder, right? And in fact, here in the U.S., they even rent storages, storage uh, facilities to put their stuff in there. Stuff that they don't even see and know anymore what they have to do with. But they keep them, keep them, keep them. And look at some closets. Closets full of stuff. They don't even use them. We keep accumulating, accumulating, accumulating things though they don't need, right? They don't need it. So, you know, uh, let's not have those kinds of attitudes. That's not good. So look into your closets. Oh, and remember how remember how every January we have that rule in the family, by the way, of only choosing how many? The articles of clothing? A dozen, right? Twelve pieces per article of clothing. That's all we're going to keep in our closets, right? And every year, every January, every year that, that begins, we try and do that because that will help us to really keep ourselves within the limit of just using and having what we need, not anything superfluous so we don't get attached to them. Okay, another tip. Before you buy anything, before you spend even just 99 cents in a 99 store or a dollar store, <laughs> Think first, do I really need this? Think 10 times, 100 times, do I really need to spend this money on this item? Because you see, the money that we earn is not for our disposal alone. No. We got to use these material things to serve others, to serve others. Okay? God is entrusting us with material wealth, with material goods, not to spend on ourselves, not to indulge on our whims and the things we want to do. No, not to indulge in all buying candy all the time or ice cream. It's not even good for our health, right? God allows us to have these material things so we become stewards of them. Okay? We become uh, 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 the ones who will administer these things for other people. So we use them to serve other people. And not just to serve our own uh, uh, likes and wants. Okay? So before you spend a dollar on anything, think a hundred times of, do I really need this? If not, if you're in doubt, chances are you don't need it. Postpone. Okay. One of the things that I, uh, I have a habit of doing, okay, and this, this mommy, of course, knows very well. Before we spend on a high-ticket item, so you husbands out there, this is a nice tip for you. Before you spend on a high-ticket item, make sure you consult your wife. See? Am I going to spend this $100 uh, on, on this particular item or not? Do we really need this in the family? Are we really going to really, really use this? See? Consult, consult, because, hey, <laughs> your money is conjugal, eh? So, consult your wife, and that's a good way that you can keep yourself aligned, you know, and not, not get distracted with all of these, uh, with all of these uh, 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 attachments. Okay, uh, oh, another, another tip, tithing, okay? Don't forget your 10%. If you can afford a 10%, go ahead. If you cannot afford a 10%, well, whatever you can afford, but make it regular. That helps you keep you on your toes. That will also give you a, a, a reason to work more and to work for more, right? Because you're giving to charity, you're giving to the church, you're giving back to God, whatever you earn. Next, do a budget. Ah, do a budget. Okay, your family. Do a budget for your family. This is what we have here. Every month we go through that budget. We try to examine how, how we spend our money for, for, the, for the month. And what what we have and what we need for the next month 
Okay? So every end of the month, that's our habit here at home. And you can see me do that, right? We have a, a, a sheet where we record every, every expense that we have. Okay? And that is a very good way to help ourselves live the spirit of detachment. Really, poverty. See, that's, re that's really poverty in the middle of the world. See, detachment and poverty are synonymous in this regard. Okay, what else? Give your time to others. Make yourselves available to others, right? When somebody asks your help, even your brother or your sister, don't be selfish. Don't say, oh, man, I'm doing my own thing. No, I don't want to help you. I don't care. No, 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 no. Give yourself. Spend some time. Sometimes it's only a question of lending an ear to somebody in need, right? Give your time to others. We were just talking yesterday, right, about how we're going to be doing visits to the poor, visits to the sick, right? So that's a part of giving our time. Time is also a resource that we have to live, uh, 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 um, that we have to practice and, 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 uh, and use properly. Okay? So give our time to others. Oh, then another tip. Take good care of what you already have. See? Take good care of what you already have. Make them last. Don't use material things as though everything is a throwaway. Okay? Don't. Just the other day, not too long, uh, how many weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I was ironing my shirt. Right? I was ironing my shirt. All of a sudden, I saw a stain on my shirt. A stain I couldn't remove. And I was just looking at the tag of this shirt. And I just thought to myself, wow. I've had this shirt for maybe 30 years. See? Because I, I, I had... I remember the, the, the store, I remember the brand, I, I just remember, I had the shirt for 30 years. That's how well I had taken care of those shirts. See? And this thing you're seeing me wear, boy, this must be ancient, really. I don't know how long ago I've had these shirts. Okay? So let's take good care of what we have. Shoes, right? Shoes, clothes, plates, furniture, right? That's why we, we have little rules in the house of how we should be taking care of the things uh, we have in the house. So make things last. That's one very good way of living poverty so you don't need to be spending things all the time, uh, spending money on everything you do, everything you need. Okay, what else might we have forgotten? Poverty, detachment is a requirement for sanctity. We really want to follow Jesus. We really want to go to heaven. We really want to go and become saints because only saints go to heaven. One last requirement besides living up to, to, the sacram, uh, to the commandments is poverty. Poverty and detachment from material things. Remember, there's nothing wrong about material things. There's nothing wrong about being rich. But we need to be detached. We need to use these material things as means to an end. The end is heaven. Never let material things eclipse the goal, which is heaven. Okay, don't forget your glasses, okay? When you look at the eclipse today, you think, boy, this, this is the effect of these glasses. You won't see the goal. You won't see heaven, I mean, under natural, I mean, normal circumstances. That's what material things do, see? To us, if we lose sight of the goal, which is heaven. So today, eclipse day, make sure you, you, you wear the ISO approved kinds of glasses so you can enjoy the beauty and the, the, the magnificent creation that God wants us to see, the magnificent creative phenomenon today, Eclipse Day, August 21, 2017. Have a good day, everybody.